In this video, we're going to have a look at building a really simple pop-up. And in the pop-up, we have an inquiry form. So we have our tours at the top. Scroll to a tour. I want to make a booking. Click on the make a booking. And the pop-up appears with a form to close. Hover over the close button. The pop-up closes. Or alternatively, I can just move my mouse outside of the uh, content area and the pop-up closes. So we're going to have a look at making a really simple pop-up. Just to show you that inside the Bricks Builder. Here we have the Bricks Builder. And of course there we have the button. And on that button we have this interaction. And the interaction then triggers the pop-up. The pop-up is also then set to only appear on the products page. So to get started what I'm going to do is first of all I'm going to delete this button. So we'll remove the button and I'll save that. And then what we're also going to do now is create a new pop-up. So to create a new pop-up, pop-up is created as a template. So on the right hand side at the top, we head over to templates. And what we're going to do now is create a new template. And we're going to call this the form uh, pop-up. And under template type, we're going to select pop-up. Very important to ensure that you get the pop-up functionality and then we create the template so there is the form pop-up and now we're going to edit that particular element so select element bricks reloads and now we're in the pop-up and you'll see a very familiar screen in which you can add the content so you can pretty much add whatever you like inside this content area i'm going to head over to layout and i'm going to select the section layout so I've created a section and a container inside that content element. You can, of course, insert any content that you want. And if you wanted to, you could even go ahead and use a query loop inside the pop-up. We're not going to do that. We're going to, uh, first, we're going to add a heading. So we'll just add a standard heading and we'll call that um, book a tour. And the next thing I'm going to do then is add a form. We'll add the form. So there we have the form. And in that form, I'm just going to add a new field, and that'll be the uh, checkbox. And that's because um, I know that I have three tours available. So the placeholder text, instead of your name, we'll just change that to book a tour. And I know that we have canoe tours. Then we have the um, road less traveled and then we have the camel safari so i know that we have those three elements i'm just quickly going to add that to my form and uh, let's just move that up there and then the last thing i'm going to add to my form here is just going to be a telephone and the all right, so there I've created the form that I want to use on my website. So that's looking good. So I've got the name. Uh, then I've got the contact number. So let's make that. So name, contact number, email. Right, so that's done. And there we have the basics then for our pop-up. Then I'm going to save that. But I also want to make a couple of changes here. So in order to get to the settings for the pop-up, you'll see that going to section isn't going to help because that targets the content. What we need to do is actually go to the settings page. So we'll head over here in the top left to settings, go to template settings, and then select pop-up. So this is the pop-up that we're working on. And now I'd like to give this pop-up some rounded borders. So I'll head down here to border. Head over to radius and let's make that 15 pixels. Click on the link and then I've got 15 pixels all around. If I wanted to add a box shadow, also quite easy. Maybe I'm going to do something like 0, 5 and then have a spread of 10 maybe and just go for this dark color and then give it a blur of 5 um, or a blur of 15. So you can decide you know, how you want that to look. and then what I'll also do is I'm just going to add a little bit of transparency to that shadow. So there I have the shadow around my uh, content, which is looking good. And I'm going to save that. Now, what I also want to do is ensure that this only runs on the page 
where it's required. And the page I know is the products page. So the top section here looks at the pop-up um, layout styling. The next section here looks at the condition. So I'm going to add a condition and I'm going to set it to just display on an individual page. And I'm going to select that here, which is products. And I don't need to apply to um, child pages or any exclusions. Then we'll save that. Now we've uh, created the pop-up. The last thing that I'm going to do though is add a close button. I just feel it's a little bit easier for the user then to click on the close button as opposed to around the edge. And to do that, I'm going to go to the container and then I'm going to add an icon. So we'll just select icon. So we've added an icon here to the uh, to the page. And what I want to do now is move this icon to the top right hand corner. And I'm going to use the absolute styling option. So I go to layout. I'm going to go to position, scroll down to absolute. And then the top, I'm going to set to zero. And the right, I'm going to set to zero. Now you'll see that the element is now moved and is now positioning itself on the page and not inside the pop-up. And the reason for that is because I need to set the container um, position to relative. The moment I set it to relative, you'll see that the icon is now contained within the container. Right. Next thing I'm going to do is change that from a star. I think I'll change that from a star to a close. And the themify is the default icons. And here you'll see we have this big X or cross. Or So I'm going to hit that close. and there we have the element. I'm also going to reduce the size a bit. It's really big. So I'm going to make it 40 pixels. And what I'm going to do now just to create some space is I'm going to go to my title here and I'm going to add some spacing in the padding and I'm going to give it 15 pixels all around. So that's just created a bit of white space here and that also just positions that in a better position. Other thing that I'm going to do is when somebody hovers over this, I'd like it to have a little effect just to show them that it is the active close button. And to do that, I'm going to head over here to interactions and we're going to add a new interaction. So the trigger is going to be on hover. The action that we're going to use then is going to be uh, to remove element or hide element and the element that we're going to target then is the pop-up and the pop-up is going to be the form pop-up. So that's going to be the close functionality. Then to add the animation on hover, I'm going to add another interaction. So you can have more than one interaction on an element and I'm going to set that to hover and the action here is going to be to start animation and the animation is going to be pulse. And we'll just leave that as it is. So the first one, trigger now, instead of changing, uh, closing on hover, I'm going to change that to um, click. So when I click on that element, it's going to hide the element and it's going to hide the pop-up element and the form pop-up. Right, so the first element that we trigger will be trigger on click. And the second element, um, that we're going to trigger here on this interaction is going to be on hover. So we've now successfully saved our popper. And now what we can do is apply that to the page. So to get back to the page, I'm going to go here to pages and select products. And you'll see now that I'm redirected back to the products page. I'm going to add a button on the content. So I'm going to go to where I'd like to insert the element, add and include a button and the button size i'm going to change that because i'd like it uh, let's make it extra large i want a really big button and now what i need to do is link this button to open the pop-up so to do that once again we head over here to interactions we're going to add an interaction we're going to select the trigger and the trigger will be a click and when we uh, uh, select the click we're going to show the element and the target is going to be the pop-up and the pop-up will be the form pop-up. Other thing that I'm going to do is um, you'll see uh, I want to change the style of the 
uh, mouse when it mouses over the button. And at the moment, I know it's not going to be the pointer, which is what we want hovering over the button, which is that little hand showing that it's clicking on something. So to get that, we click on the button. To go now to styles, you simply select the interactions again, and you'll see that you now have option on the style. Uh, the style option is available and here you go to layout scroll down on the layout section until you get to cursor and change that to pointer now you'll uh, you won't see it here but when we're on the front end of the website this will show the little hand with the uh, up finger next thing that i'm going to do is uh, on that button uh, under content i'm just going to use some default styles here so i'm going to change the style here to dark and what I'm also going to do then is just quickly change that typography to this orange color. There we have. And go back to the button. And I think I'm going to make it a circle. So we have this rounded look. So there we have our button. And maybe that typography we're going to make a little bit heavier. So let's go to the... Um, let's just get to the font weight. And I'm going to make that... 600 right so there we have our button and now we've set the trigger so if i save that and i head over to the website you'll see it's still showing the previous button let's refresh uh, now we have the new button you'll see that the mouse changes to, to the little hand and when i click on that it opens with book a tour and when i mouse over um, we're not seeing that um, animation when we mouse over the close icon so we'll just have another look at getting that to work but the close icon is working and i can also click outside but i'm also noticing perhaps i want to go with a slightly darker color um maybe there's too much background coming through and the darker background also forces more focus let's look at this in the mobile view quickly so if we look at it here in the mobile view um, i'm going to click on i'm a button and you'll see that the element is right up against the edge and we want to create some space between the element and the side of the page. So, right, that's um, looking relatively good. So let's go ahead and make those changes. Head back to Bricks Builder. And I know that I need to be working inside the template for the pop-up. So I'm going to go to Templates. Here's my form pop-up. And I'm going to edit. And when that loads up, right, first thing I'm going to do then is have a look at the mobile view and even the tablet view and you'll see it goes right to the edge of the page so what i'm going to do then if i want to create some space we head over to settings and template settings over to pop-up and here in the first option for padding i'm going to add 20 pixels so you can see now that we're creating some padding around the side of this element so the first um set of uh, settings here is to do with everything on the outside of the content and when we have a look at the elements on the inside then the content will be this 30 pixels that you see all around the edge on the inside next that i'm going to do is change the background color so i want to do that for all sizes so i'm going to go back to the mobile view uh sorry the desktop view head over to background and then select a color and just to get started, I'm going to scroll, I'm going to move the um, slider here for transparency. And now I'm going to move the lightness all the way down to completely dark. So now you'll see that when I slide, it's in the darker range. And I just think that the darker color you can immediately see forces more focus. Let's have a look at the other elements. And yes, now on mobile, it's also going to look a lot better. What we also wanted to look at is that interaction on that element to make it uh, have some animation when we hover so what i'm going to do now is now this is a content element so we'll edit that in the normal way and to do that i'm going to head over here to interaction so the first interaction is to click and to hide element and that is working the second interaction we said was hover start animation the pulse and the animation duration We'll set everything as normal and the target is self. So if that's not working, then I'm going to change that to a different animation and I'll change that to heartbeat. 
So all I've done is change the animation to heartbeat, head over to the website, refresh, click on I'm a button, and let's have a look at that in the desktop view. And now you'll see that in the desktop view, let's just refresh that. We click on I'm a button, and now you see that we have that hover effect. You'll also notice that the cursor is showing the pointer, and maybe we want to change that to the hand similar to what we have on the send button. So to do that, back to the content element, I need to get back to style. So click on the interaction button at the top of the page. I can go back to style, layout, scroll down to cursor, and change the auto to pointer. We save that, head over to the website, refresh, and now you'll see opens up, the cursor changes, and we have that nice little heartbeat animation right so that's looking good let's have a look at that mobile view again quickly so back to mobile and you'll see now that it does fill the page a lot nicer so that is looking really good this top gap that you see here is really just um, the menu from wordpress that's where it would fit and that's why we see that empty gap at the top of the page but it will look fine when used on a live site so here we have then um, our pop-up working really nicely. We can interact, we can fill in the form. And now I'm going to go back to my website and I'm going to navigate back to the page. So the nice thing about this navigation section is you can put, move quite quickly between your pop-up and your page. Head back to products and now I'm going to deploy that form uh, to the entire page. So what I'll do then is Let's delete that button. We'll delete that button and we'll just simply duplicate. Now I'm just going to drag it over and then I'm going to duplicate that again. And now I have it duplicated on the page. Let's have a look at that in the different views. And you'll see in the mobile view, we might want to just add a bit of space, which has nothing to do with the button, but just the layout of the page. So I'm going to head over to that div and, um, or maybe just to the button. And under the layout, we'll just add some margin at the bottom so that it looks good on mobile. If you added a class to the button, you could, of course, then just apply that once. Okay, so, so now we've um, applied that really nicely to the website. The other thing that we want to do is just make sure that the pop-up is only set to run on one page, and that's the product page. And just to double-check that that has indeed been set, head over to templates, and I'm going to edit the template for the pop-up. And you'll see now we go back to settings, template settings, and conditions. And we've said to run on an individual page, and that was the product page. And that's indeed what is happening. If I remove this condition here, so if I was to say I'm going to remove that condition for this pop-up. So now there are no conditions for the pop-up to run. And I go back to the website, refresh, and click. You'll see that no pop-up is running. So you do need to set a condition for the pop-up to work. Head back here to the conditions, add a condition, select, set it to individual, select the page, which is the products page in this case, and then I'm going to save. Head over to the website, refresh, click on the um, button, and the pop-up appears. So that's how you can quite easily then uh, create a pop-up for your website with, uh, in this case, we've just put in an inquiry form, but you can do pretty much whatever it is that you need for your website. Well, I hope you found that interesting. Thank you for watching.